no mama, we gonna be all right. And this is the reason why we need you to release 80,000 strong and bring them home by Christmas. We gonna be all right. Skimming, and let me tell you about my life. Painkillers only put me in a twilight. We're pretty bitchin' minutes to hide. Next, to the stage. Mama, this is what I like, Lord knows. 20 of them in my Chevy, tell them all to come and get me reaping everything. We have a, a real street soldier. And also an honorable man who has something to say about this travesty in the criminal and justice system. Dana Stevens from Studio 29. And also Chicago Vow video about police attack on black people. Put your hands together for Dana Stevens. First of all, I want to say it's an honor to uh, sit on the bus today with a modern day Rosa Parks, also known as Dr. Madeline. And I'm grateful that she's going to refuse that our people have to stay in cages and that she's willing to stand up today and for the years that she's labored to see this event happen. So Dr. Madeline, I say thank you and I honor you and you inspire me with your faith. I want to start off with a quote. I was privileged enough a couple weeks ago to walk through the National Black History Museum right here in Washington, D.C. And I noticed this quote, which I think sums up why our system of justice is so corrupt. Let me get my screen back on. Humphrey Morris, he said, Negroes, are a perishable commodity when you have an opportunity dispose of them for gold i believe that sums up the foundation of this nation when it comes to you as my black brothers and sisters and that spirit has not changed the only difference is the way we sell you for gold 20-some years ago, I was a white man, as you can see, and I still am. Came to Chicago to go to Moody Bible Institute from a small town in southern Minnesota where we call it the Great White North, not just because we get a lot of snow, but because we filled with a lot of white folk. My first time walking into an all-black community, I was walking back from church on a Sunday afternoon. Up in front of me, I saw five young black men, and naturally my mind went to what our society says about our young black men. They're a gang. They're a drug dealer. You better go to the other side of the street. Didn't have a cell phone at that time, so I couldn't call 911. But then I thought, how dare I stereotype? When they were about to greet me, and I was going to greet them, they left me in the snow on that March morning, bloody and beat up. The last one who kicked me said, welcome to racism. And he ran off. That was the turning point in my life. To not judge these young men by what they did to me, but to understand the pain and the suffering that caused them to beat me up a representation of our nation and how we value our young black brothers and sisters. For the next 23 years, the, the Lord took me down a journey to deeply understand the shackles, the pain and the suffering that has held my fellow black Americans in this country down and oppressed. A couple months ago, the Lord finally revealed to me the similarity between Pharaoh and the Hebrews as the United States government unto our black brothers and sisters. You were brought here as slaves, and to this day, you still are not valued anything more than a slave. We have used every situation and every opportunity to keep you down. And the biggest one we use today is called the correctional facility. 
We use it to chain you, to encage you, to cause you to go crazy. See, us white people believe that there's a few of us that are criminals. But we're taught that you as blacks are criminals with a few exceptions. The unfortunate thing is when you have done your time, you are still shackled to the system. Even though you young men and women might be out walking the streets in non-DOC clothing, your hands, your neck, and your legs are still shackled to a system that doesn't desire to see you rise up and be the chosen people that God has chosen you to be. You are chosen people. And you don't need a nation to tell you you're chosen. You need to believe you're chosen and then begin to walk as chosen people. I've been on both sides of the fence. I have the best of both worlds. I'm white, and I get to walk in the privilege of being a white man. But then I've had the honor of having my life blessed and accepted by my black brothers and sisters. I say this, you've seasoned my life in such incredible ways. You are my heroes. The young men and women locked up are my heroes, my inspiration. If my feet were in your shoes, I don't know if I'd have the stamina that you have. I've been walking with a young man for 18 years that was falsely accused of raping and murdering two white women. No DNA, no uh, physical evidence, no witnesses because he wasn't there at those crimes. But the judge has to back up the detectives and the detectives have to back up the officers. And naturally he's just a black man, less valuable than a dog. He's been sentenced to life plus 65 years in prison. This March he will make 18 years. His name is Michael Sanders. For 16 years I was an advocate in Cook County Jail where we set up programs called the Life Learning Dorm to empower these young men to believe who they are and not what society says you are. But the struggle isn't even just to get out. The struggle for my young black men and women once they get out is to stay out because the system has them shackled. One foot in and the other one tied up. The speaker before me said it's thirty to fifty thousand dollars to keep a young man in prison. Chicago public schools pay between six and eight thousand for a student to be in school. You know where the gold is. You know who the commodity is. Now we understand why the system is the way the system is. So yes, I stand with you as a white male to apologize that this country from the very foundation has done you wrong and we're still doing you wrong. And I pray that my fellow white brothers and sisters will repent. But even if they don't, to my chosen black brothers and sisters, as Dr. Madeline has said, get ready. 2020 will, will mark 400 years since the first documented slave in Jamestown. How many years were the Hebrews under the slavery of the Egyptians? 400 years. How many years was there silence between the Old Testament and the of Jesus coming on the scene. 400 years. Get ready, my people. Your redemption is coming nigh. The system will come down because God is a God of justice. God is a God that has heard the cries of all the innocent men that have been killed. 
And so President Obama, we know this nation is fearful that you release these young black men and women, not because they're criminals, but because of the power that lies behind them. Every time I go to a white church or a white community, see, they don't see the connection to why they should care about young black men in prisons. And I ask them to raise their hand if they have a loved one that's died or suffering from cancer. Nine out of 10 raise their hands. And I said, I'll guarantee you, one of those innocent young black men or women, God had ordained to be the founder of a cure for that cancer. That's why their lives are important to you. So I joined forces with Dr. Madeline as an honor. I look to you as my black brothers and sisters as an honor that you have embraced me, that you have loved me and supported me for 23 years. I live on the west side of Chicago. I'm known as White Chocolate, Revy D. I'm embraced. I love my community. Yes, we're considered a ghetto. Yes, I go to sleep at night by gunshots. But see, on every street corner, I see potential. On every street corner, I don't see a gang member or a drug dealer or ex-convict. I see businessmen. I see young men that are out there as businessmen from early in the morning till late at night. It's our responsibility to direct their potential and their businesses and their gifts so that when they take vacation, it's not to a cage, but it's over to the Caribbean. So, President Obama, we support you in Chicago. We support you. We thank you for giving hope to the hopeless and for letting our people, let me say, for setting God's people free. Thank you.